I'm on to building the room for putting the batteries because they wouldn't fit in the original battery box whatever I do purchase so what I've done is just found a piece of marine ply that's just been sitting around and I've cut it down to size now it's not at the right place for the back seats but I'm just going to cut this out so that there is an area for the rear seats to kind of go down but uh, no that's that that's all in place and uh, I'm going to put the batteries on top of this bit of board. Cleaned up the car a little bit, ready to put the base in properly. Um, I was just having a look under the seats too, under the carpet too, because um, I was just checking that there wasn't too much mould under there. There was a bit of mould. Um, the floor is a bit soft, but it's not too rotten. But I'm just going to leave that out for a while and let it dry out because it is starting to crack around there. So what I might do is get a bit of metal or something, just a thin sheet of something, just to go over the top of that for now, just a quick fix. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna get the other part of the floor fitted in, ready for the batteries. And uh, that's that. Here is the floor, um, finished floor after using the spare bit of ply that I had lying around. Um, there's some struts underneath here that sit down into the tray on the edges just in case it needs that extra support i was going to bolt it up from underneath but considering how solid that is now after the weight of the batteries is down there i don't think it's going anywhere so um and also that will be clamped slightly by the that will be in place by the chair so even if something did happen anything's going to lift up and hit the chair instead so it's all going to be well stuck in there but that's solid enough to bolt all the batteries down so yeah that's the platform done um, I may try and find a thin piece of ply just to go on top of this I'm not sure yet um, it may be okay once it's dry and the carpet goes back in but it may also be safe just to just to put a little something on there it won't hurt um, whilst I wait to be able to pick up the batteries I think I'm going to go for the um, those 60 volt LG Chem modules. That seems to be the cheapest option for the most kilowatt hours. So um, I'm probably just going to go with one bank for now, but I've been offered the whole 18 module set um, for a really cheap price, 2,375 quid. And that is essentially 20, that's about 20 kilowatt hours of battery power. So if I could fit that in the car, that would be insane. But uh, I think I may have to just go with the six modules for now just to get it on the road, hopefully. Um, so while I'm waiting for that to happen, um, I've got the number plate fitted. I've put it down here because of the decals I'm thinking of getting on the car, and also I'm missing the one of the bolt, I'm missing, well, one of them was broken as well, so I'm missing the, uh, the little nuts that go inside the bumper to screw the number plate in its original place so I fixed it down here at the bottom and the other issue that I had was that this light was quite loose in here and um, this, this the bracket on this side is broken so I've tightened it up here hope, uh, hoping that that should be solid enough to hold it which it seems to be but I just hope that it's not going to affect the line of the light beam too much for the MOT so we'll figure that out when it comes to it um, I'll have to adjust it a little bit if I do if it does need some adjusting but otherwise that's everything for today I think I don't have much else to do apart from tidy a few more bits up and make sure it's ready to take the batteries also realized that I had some spare laminate flooring from when I did the garage so all I've done is just made a piece just to fit straight into there I might screw it down um, but that gives me the extra support where that plywood seemed a little bit weak so um, that should work and as long as the plywood dries out that should stay there for quite a long time in the end I decided to buy these batteries reason being is that they are 67 volts max charge um, and they're uh, they're pretty cheap. They're working out about they work out at about a hundred per kilowatt hour. 
100 per kilowatt. So I'm buying this string. I may buy a second string. He has three available. So I may get the third one because he's, he's offering it to me at a discount. Um, so maybe if this all works out, I might be able to offer a, some batteries for conversions on the GWiz or I might sell them on. I don't know. But um, I, want, I might put two lots of strings in to the car. Uh, that would give me a that would give me a hundred miles range, which would be kind of cool. So um, I'm thinking about that. It may be worth going for the offer and going ahead with that build, um, even though it's going to cost me a little bit more. But yeah, I, it's just tempting, <laughs> so tempting. Um, now the reason I was a bit hesitant is because there's no real information on putting a BMS onto these cells. Um, there's not much information on it. However, um, what I have found is this video here. Um, there was some, there was some volume, there was some Volvo LG Chem cells that this guy used to um, wire up his power wall. And now all he's done is put some cheap BMSs onto the onto the cells. And then he's just powering. He's just powering the BMS. Um, he's just powering the. He's powering his system straight off the BMS. Now I probably won't hook it through the BMS itself. I could do that, but then I risk having the same issue that I have with my current car, which is if you go below, if you go right down to low voltage and one cell runs out before the other, it cuts them all off. Um, which is why I fused all of my individual modules so that I don't end up with the same problem as before in the BMS being burnt out because it can't handle the current. The battery can, but the BMS can't. So um, that is a potential idea. However, I may just forget the BMS for the time being because it's going to be a long time before these cells do even remotely start to go out of balance, especially the way I'm going to be using them. So I'll focus on other things for the time being. Um, but yeah, so... That's going to be my choice, and uh, stay tuned, and you'll see when I've picked them up and fitted them into the car. I've just been giving it some thoughts on where to put the batteries. The obvious is in the back, but I was just having a look at this space because there's no aircon in here. There's actually a huge amount of space under here, so maybe in the future you could add another five or six batteries in that space, and. Um, that would be insane. That would give you, that would give you 150 mile range using the cells that I'm using without taking too much room up in the back seats, because the plan that I have right now is to build the batteries in, into the back seats, and that's where I'll put the rapid chargers as well, etc. So it's going to uh, take up a bit of space in there. I reckon you could get eight to nine cells in the floor, um, but that would be amazing if I could get a battery box made in there that would make it a more even weight too and you would have you could fit easily six cells in there but then you need to do all the cooling pipe work and all that kind of stuff but what I might also do is possibly put a radiator in the front uh, we shall see and then that will cool the batteries or the pump but that is what I've been thinking about. So I think for now what I'm going to do today is to pull this seat out. I found another piece of ply that I can make into a solid base here. It's really thick ply so that will support the batteries no problem. So that's the plan for now is to build the back bench rather than have seats in there and uh, prepare that space. The progress so far. I've um, given it uh, I've put it to there so that I can still get to all these connections down here without taking this beam out. Now what I'm going to do is get some long bolts and bolt them straight through so they're connected down here. And then I'm going to use the original bolt holes underneath this to um, fix that down. And then the piece of ply is going to be cut to fit this whole area. So I've just got to do, I've just got to get the holes bored, get that secured, and uh, we'll be on to the next step. So here's the rear shelf in place. I haven't bolted it, I haven't screwed this part down just yet because I'm not sure what I'm doing with it. And it's not perfect because it was a recycled bit of wood, um, but 
it fits and that will provide a very solid surface to either put batteries on, use as storage, all that kind of stuff. So it's, uh, it's a good shelf, I'm pleased with it. I've bolted it down, if I slide this out, I've basically bolted it down into the, there's some bolt, there's some nuts in here. So underneath here I've got a couple of bolts, long bolts, going right down into that. And then the eventual plan is to do the same with here, because right now they're not bolted and it's tricky to get in there. But uh, once I get the chance to, I'll pull the wheel arches off. Now once this is all screwed down, granted that's done, that won't move anyway because that will hold it just like the seat did if I bolted it down here. But just to be safe, in the future I will probably get under there, strip it all down and put some bolts in once I'm certain that's how I'm going to do things. But yeah, so that's the shelf kind of made and ready for putting the batteries on top or putting chargers on top. We'll see.